Hi, this is Mrs. Timmons, and I'm going to talk to you about inserting and formatting footnotes using Microsoft Word and Noodle Tools. So first we're going to start in Noodle Tools looking at the source that we are planning to footnote. You need to be careful not to use the full citation in your footnote because sometimes there are formatting changes and so uh, notice right here you've got all of the authors names listed that's part of the Chicago Manual of Style citation but when you're footnoting I want you in Noodle Tools to go to options footnote format and notice there are two different formats there is a full footnote format and a shortened footnote format the first time you cite anything you will use the full footnote and then any other time you cite it, you'll use the shortened footnote. And Noodle Tools inserts some coding here that tells you this is where you would insert a page number. So let's say I am using page 55. If I enter that in this interactive box, it formats it, and this is how it's going to look in my footnote. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that to get ready to cite it. And now I'm going to go into my Word document. I've got my bibliography already at the bottom, but I need to go and insert my first footnote. So in Microsoft Word, I find the place where I want to insert my footnote. It's always going to go after the punctuation. And in Word, I choose References, and then I just say Insert Footnote. It will take care of numbering it and creating a place at the bottom and then I am going to paste what I copied out of Noodle Tools right there. That is my full footnote for the first time that I cite from this source. Now it's not formatted correctly yet so we're going to circle back and talk about that later but first I want to get a couple more footnotes in there. Um, there is another kind of footnote that is not a citation footnote but is what is called a discursive or substantive footnote and that is material that is interesting but not necessarily relevant sometimes you can include it you'll see books published with this information if I wanted to insert a discursive footnote I would add another footnote but in this case it's not a citation it's um, this is a discursive footnote. You should probably check with your teacher to see whether or not they want you to use uh, substantive footnotes or not. And then for my third footnote, I'm going to go back here. Anytime there's a direct quote, you're definitely going to need to cite that source. And again, you're going to place your footnote after the punctuation. But because I'm citing from the same source a second time, I have to go back into Noodle Tools and now I have to get my shortened footnote. And let's say I'm citing from page 56. So this is for um, any time beyond the first time that you use that particular source, you're going to use the shortened version. Um, so I'm going to paste that in by doing references, insert footnote. I'm going to paste that right there. And now I have three footnotes in there. So let's talk a little bit about formatting. But first I do want to show you that this is pretty interactive. I've got my three footnotes. Let's say I change my mind. I, re I check with my teacher and I realize, no, they do not want discursive footnotes in there and I need to take it out. This is in the middle of source one and three. So if I just delete it right here, it will delete it from the bottom as well. But that creates a bit of an issue because I have now the same source directly beneath a source uh, directly beneath the same thing and there is a way to cite that that is a little bit different and that is using an abbreviation IBID. IBID is a Latin abbreviation it means basically the same as above in all the previous editions of Chicago style for a hundred years whenever you cite the same size directly below same site directly below something you would use IBID but the main reason you would use that is your page number is different. So the only reason I would have two citations from the exact same source back to back is if there was a different page number. And so they have this abbreviation that basically says this source is exactly the same as the one above, just the page number has changed. Now the newest, the 17th uh, edition of Chicago Manual of Style prefers that you use that shortened version, that Turabian comma manual. but 
uh, your teacher may like you to learn how to use IBID and may want you to use that. So I just wanted to show you that this is what it looks like. Now the thing to keep in mind about IBID, let's say you had a third source that was something different and then your fourth source you were citing to Rabian again. For your fourth source, you couldn't use IBID again because that would refer to whatever was directly above it, which would be your third source. So you would have to go ahead and use that short format again, which just to remind you is going to look like that. So um, if you have any questions, ask, but that's how IBID works. And this is a good reminder of why uh, it, it's good to do your formatting of your footnotes toward the end of your paper writing because it is when you move things around sometimes it can change the format of the footnotes and so you need to pay special attention to that. Okay, now there are two different ways to format these footnotes to make sure that they're in the right style that your teacher wants. First, you can just you can simply highlight them. So let's say your teacher has asked that everything is in Times New Roman. So I can change it right there. And you should check with your teacher about the font. So uh, it's perfectly acceptable um, according to the rules to have the font be the same as it is uh, in the rest of your paper. So to go ahead, if your paper is in 12 point font times New Roman, uh, the manual will say that that's perfectly fine. Your teacher though may have a different preference and so that's why you would want to check with your teacher before you change that. However, there's two more problems with this citation right now. One is that um, it's not indented and the other is that there's not a line a space in between my two citations. So another way that you can go in and format that is if you go in and look at your paragraph options you have options right here under indentation to add an indentation. So you can say for the text that I've highlighted, please indent the first line. And you can say OK. And there you've got your indentation. Uh, you can also, in the paragraph spacing, it's under this button that says line and paragraph spacing. And you're going to click to add a space after the paragraph. And when I click that, now I've got my uh, my two citations with a space in between them and that's my correct formatting. Now there is another way to do this. Um, you're going to basically create a style that will then do this automatically. Um, that has some advantages and some disadvantages. Again, when you highlight your text, you do see that there is a button for styles. And if you don't see that, when you go to home, then there is a styles box right here. And so instead of picking an existing style, I'm going to want to create my own style. So if I click styles, I'm going to say apply a style. And this it's recognizing that it's I'm highlighting the footnote text and I'm going to modify the style. So in here, I can say all my footnote text style, I want to be Times New Roman. Let's say I do want it to be 12 point font. And then I can also click this format button and look again in the paragraph tabs and say whenever I apply my footnote text style, I want to indent my first line. So now I've essentially created or modified this footnote style. And when I apply it, it does that. However, it so there's some good things it does and some bad things it does. One bad thing that this does is it, first of all, has wiped out my line spacing that I just put in. So I need to go back to line spacing and add that. But also it took out my um, my uh, italics and my titles are supposed to be in italics. So I need to go back and add that. So those are some problems. However, one thing that could be beneficial, instead of having the number in superscript, it's now got it in, in regular 12 point font. And some teachers are perfectly fine and will accept the number in the superscript the way that Microsoft Word formats it naturally. But other teachers, and I think the sort of preferred way to do it is to have it in this sort of same font and style as the rest of your text. So by applying the styles, it's a way to do that, a way to change that. But you've got to catch if it gets rid of your italics, you've got to go back in there and edit it. So there's pros and cons to both methods, but either way, hopefully you will be able to format your footnotes. If you have any questions, please ask. Thanks.